journalists, as broadcasters, as people that are in the media, of course, we spend quite a significant amount of time uh, with our national leaders as well as we develop relationships to probe them and, and, and open them up for transparency so that we are able to relay that information to you as well. And just before she stepped out of the studio, I had to uh, hold on to uh, Elako Shitatala so that we can reflect a little bit on the relationship and the experiences that she also had uh, with the president. She is, of course, the anchor uh, for one of our flagship programs that looks at the communities and what happens on the ground. Elago, um, so I say welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> we now switched out. positions and oh, I'm sure the viewers are wondering what's happening. What's happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. How does it feel like being a guest? Are you on the other side? It, huh? It's, it's nerve-wracking. Funny <laughs> enough, I feel like I'm in a complete different studio, uh -huh. but I'm, I'm exactly in the same place, just seated on the other side. On the other side. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, Elago, I mean, you know, one of the things about uh, our, our profession generally is that Many people say it's a calling. You know, mm -hmm. you don't get into media, you don't get into journalism, you don't get into broadcasting unless, you know, it, many people say that it's a career for poverty, but <laughs> you can be an idealist that wants to make things change. Mm -hmm. Just reflect a little bit on, you know, when you heard the news first. Mm. Uh, we don't thought not, not the first time that you're talking about the president, but when you heard the news first, where were you and what, what was your initial reaction and thinking around it? I was at home. Um, I was at home with a few friends. Um, it was round about midnight. Mm. And... I, I, I thought it wasn't true. I mean, I was, I was really in denial. I was, and then I immediately switched on the television to see if there would be an announcement. But then shortly after I heard the news, then I received, I received a call um, from work asking me to, to avail myself. Mm -hmm. And when I received that call, it was then confirmation mm -hmm. that it was indeed true. It was heartbreaking. It was, I was in disbelief because just earlier that night we had received um, a, an announcement that the president was in critical condition but stable. stable yeah. So it was not news that we were prepared for at all, even from me as a journalist. Mm. The, you know, for many cases, when, when stuff like this is, of course, unprecedented, mm -hmm. but in many situations, you, of course, your career as a journalist is a lot of ups and downs and major mm -hmm. events that sort of make up that career. Mm. And you expect it to stay professional, even if you yeah. have some sort of personal reaction to that. Mm. How are you balancing that out? Of course, you have to come in on Sunday, immediately put on your, your, your work hat, mm. while at the same time mourning for, for our leader. Mm. When I received the call at midnight, I remember jumping into the shower, but um, the, the matter was clarified that uh, another colleague was, was then able to, to make it faster than I would. Mm. So we, it was agreed that they would show up rather than me. And I didn't end up coming to work on the Sunday, though. But I was here early Monday morning for Good Morning Namibia. Mm. I thought I was actually okay. I thought. But um, that morning, the... Um, one of one of my bosses, I think Mr. Peter Denk, mm. came came later to me um, that morning, and he gave me a a long hug, and he said, "You looked terrible. You looked devastated on Good Morning Namibia." Funny enough, I think to the viewers it was obvious, though I thought I was hiding it well. Mm. It was difficult, I guess, then to separate my emotions from within from what. I looked like on the outside, but um, I, I managed to pull through the, th the three hours of the breakfast program, but it was just really difficult. And I was not coming to terms with using terms like the late president. Yeah. That was very difficult. I still, I feel I'm struggling to, to refer to the president as the late president and to refer to, uh, you know, Monica Genkos as former first lady. It's, it's heartbreaking. The of course, one of the reasons also that you're sitting here is because we are a country that is revered globally mm -hmm. for having the best press freedom, yes. world press freedom. Yes. Of course, uh, number one on the continent, uh, I think it's fourth in the world, mm -hmm. and we've always stayed in the top four globally and have always been just between, I think only on two occasions, uh, we were second place. Mm. Let's reflect a little bit on that in terms of how we enjoy the, the kind of freedom of press that we enjoy here. We can you know, freely sp speak and write about government yeah. and his relationship, of course, also with, with, with journalists, but within the context of, of press freedom for our country. Yes, I, I, I'm going to start that by speaking about the NBC, first of all, before yes. I go to the president. Mm. Now, the NBC director general and the board um, had this brilliant idea to approach um, some presenters at the corporation to create programs um, that they would like to have on television. Mm. There was no limitation to this request. And I, cre I, I came up with the idea of the program in the community with Ilago Shitatala. Mm. Now, this program, it, it, it not only... Um, is about the community as is it as yeah, the name, yeah. you know, as it is in the name, but it is one that also looks at, you know, the struggles 
that the community faces mm -hmm. and approaches the necessary office bearers. So it's a, it's a program that um, speaks on accountability. Mm -hmm. So when I created it, I remember thinking this might not be accepted. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I pitched the program here, it was, it was accepted without any question. And I, I, you know, having read and heard about, you know, state media and how they report on government and how they are controlled from other countries, I was try. I was thinking perhaps the same would be applied here. Because obviously that it's a kind of program that will be exposing certain yes. you know, weaknesses within the system, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and yes. how, how people but, are. But it was also it also into. highlights the positives. We were also True. giving credit mm. where it's due. Mm. However, we were also somewhat touching on, on the negatives, and in 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 regards to that, I also felt perhaps from government side it wouldn't be accepted, but that mm. wasn't the case. Because last year, the president um, surprised me with an invitation where he acknowledged the, the, the program, the In the Community program. So that speaks to, to free press because not once at the NBC were, was the program censored and not once from a governmental standpoint was the program ever censored also. So that really is from a personal point of view is my view of the press freedom and mm -hmm. I, am, I am living it every day. Mm -hmm. There is something I quickly want to play in as we continue with the conversation. Take Why a look at this. Oh, okay. Jamga gun. I don't know why people are doing jam guns. I never met her before. I only see her on TV, TV talking and running around with jeans in the field. I so let me invite her and surprise her, and introduce her. We did a good job, we recognize. So I never met her, so nice to meet you. But you know the way. <laughs> that lady in the white dress there. Yes. That How did that moment happen? Talk to me about that. How, how did you get to, 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 to that place? Because not everybody gets that honor mm. to be singled out, to be invited to the big house and to be recognized. Mm. I, I'm actually, you know, getting a little bit emotional looking at that moment because um, that moment has changed my life. As, as, as little as it might seem, as nothing as it might seem, because it's not a presentation of a certificate or an award of some sort, it's a recognition. But to me, it meant so much. How did it come about? Uh, I was at work um, on a Friday, on a, on a Friday in December. It was, my, it was the last day, my last day at work. I was hosting Good Morning Namibia that morning as well. And I had an interview with uh, Dr. Hengari. And after the interview, of course, we always engage our guests, you know, um, on a personal level. And he says to me, your program is doing very well. The president has been praising the program. He loves watching it. Um, but we will be in touch because as the office, we also want to collaborate with the program. And I said, that will be amazing if we can get responses on accountability from the first office. Mm. And shortly after that, I, when I finished my program, then I received invitation from Dr. Hengari. And the invitation said that the president is, requ is, is requesting for my presence at an event at State House mm. to, or, to take place later that afternoon. And of course, I accepted the invitation. Who rejects an, an invitation from the president? Of course. Yeah. And I just thought perhaps it's just a number of media personnel being invited to this event. You thought it was sort of a general gathering. Yeah, yeah. you know. And um, Dr. Hengari didn't divulge much information about it. But then later in the day, I received a call from State House personnel explaining exactly what the event is about. It was basically just an end of year function for State House personnel, which I thought then, oh, even better. So I'm basically just going to go and eat and be merry. <laughs> and I got ready. I went to the event. I sat at the back <laughs> in, the, in the hall, and that's because I couldn't, I didn't see anyone that I recognized apart from individuals that we've obviously engaged on a professional mm. level. Mm. And I sat at one of the tables at the back because I, when I walked in, I, I asked, are tables designated or can mm. I sit anyway? And I was informed, no, you can sit anywhere. So for, for the sake of respect, I thought, let me sit at the back because I was the last minute invite anyways. Yeah. And no, after that, I was ushered all the way into the front seat. I was seated at the table with the governor, just um, a table away from mm. the main table, the mm. president who had not arrived at the time yet. Mm. And 
It was a short program, just with a welcoming by the president and um, a message to the to the employees mm -hmm. and um, concluding remarks that were going to be made by the speaker of the national assembly. And the vice president, now the president, was also mm -hmm. present there. He also spoke at the event. The president then walks in. Um, all protocol had to be observed. Mm -hmm. we, we rose. We, we then sat. And the MC for that event was the uh, minister in the, in, the office, in the office of the presidency, mm -hmm. that is Madame Christine uh, Koebis. Mm -hmm. So she starts her salutations, you know. She starts with Your Excellency um, President Hage Genkop. She goes on to the Vice President, and she, you know she acknowledges all the all the, the leaders in the room. And what was interesting for me, she mentions and our special guest, Miss Ilago Chitatala. Ricardo, I froze and I started <laughs> shaking. And I'm sitting at a table with dignitaries as well, yeah. so I'm trying to compose myself. And I'm, asked, I'm questioning, why am I being referred to as a, as a special guest? As a special guest. Now you're wondering, okay, what's coming next now? Yes, <laughs> and I, I turned to the president's table to see if they are flinging, because mm. this surely can't be right. Mm. And no, um, that happened. So I, I, I don't remember what happened after that. I, I swear, it, I, it went blank. The president was then called onto the stage. Mm. And it was a very informal event, so he also didn't have a formal speech um, out, lined out. But he started speaking, and he says, um, we have a special guest here. I, I called her here. It's a surprise. She doesn't know. And then he says, Shitetele. Her name is difficult. And he, uh. he, re he referred to me as Shitetele. Uh. And that's what you see in the video. And I sat there for a while, and he, still, and he says, come here. But I was so confused, I still sat for a while, but he was looking directly at me. So then I stood and I walked uh -huh. up to him. And in one of the pictures that I even posted on my social media, I am looking at him like this because I'm really trying to fathom, is this really the president like that is <laughs> calling me <laughs> giving to me the a, podium? Giving me a, a, an invitation, yes. making sure I sit on the table, literally closest to him, yes. and then calls you for that recognition. Yeah. So, you know... That, that's, that's how it went. I mean, the rest is seen in the video. Mm. Um, I had the opportunity, of course, to, in, to engage him for a couple of hours mm. after um, the formal proceedings, mm. which was mm. profound because I learned about the man and mm. not the president. And I also saw the relationship of not just him and, and his ministers, but him and the first lady. And every time I think back to that day, my heart breaks because the love that they shared and the love that I saw that night was beautiful. Outside of what we know professionally, of course, like you said, with those engagements with the man, what is the one or two things that you can take away from that you're saying, look, this is something I can keep with me for wisdom mm. for the future? It's the fact that his term for the Namibian house that he uses mm. is really, not, it's not just a statement that he's using as a persona out there for, for his, as a theme perhaps of, of his it's, reign. It's not a PR stunt. No, it's not yeah. a PR stunt. It's really who he is because um, I think the first time that I sat next to him around the dinner table mm. and when I, when I spoke to him, what he said was, what stood out for me, what he actually mentioned that was that he saw me first on, on Good Morning Namibia. Mm. And what stood out um, about me for him was that, you know, on Good Morning Namibia, we ad lib quite a lot. Mm. In one of my ad libs, I mentioned that I am Namibian. And that is how he took recognition of me that he mentioned to me. Mm. And that was one of the things that stood out for me, that this man is who he says he is. Mm. It was not just a public publicity stunt. Mm. And in those conversations, because we then, I was then um, privileged to have sat with him in a room, with him, the vice president, and other ministers. I was the only ordinary member, if I would categorize myself yeah. as such. Yeah. And the discussions that they were having in that room were about, you know, economy, they were about the development of this country. And that was at, that was at night, mind you. Mm. It was a social, it was a social gathering, mm. but their conversations were really just centered on how to better the country amongst many other conversations. And I sat there just thinking, this is really their life. They really care for the Namibian people. Mm. And talking about that, that, that care as well, I think one of the, the groups, and, and that comes with the recognition, has always been to empower women as well as young people. Mm -hmm. And we've seen now, particularly with the second term, that there was a lot of young women that were also empowered. Mm -hmm. You know, your Emma Theophilus, yes. your patient Masuas going yes. into parliament, etc. Reflect a little bit on, on, on that part, because 
even earlier on you were saying that he had a unique way of connecting to young people, mm -hmm. but it wasn't just the posturing, mm -hmm. it was actual work in terms of empowering young people. Mm -hmm. On my, on my platform, um, on Good Morning Namibia this mm -hmm. week, we engaged uh, the Swapo Party Youth League, mm -hmm. and the gentleman that we spoke to made mention of the fact that the president would take them along on trips mm -hmm. and teach them how things are done, introduce them to the world leaders. Mm -hmm. I think his um, vision, he's a visionary man, he was a visionary man, mm -hmm. um, and because of that, he knew that everything that he knows needs to be passed on to the next generation. And I think that that is why it was so important for him to involve young people. And I also think there was something deeper to, to my invitation, mm -hmm. not only to the event, the fact that he allowed me mm -hmm. to go into this private seating and mm -hmm. just have a casual conversation with these individuals. Mm -hmm. It was to show me something and to teach me something as a young journalist who, who has a long um, life ahead of her of, of myself you know I think it was really just on the aspect of passing on the knowledge passing on the skill teaching us and showing us that the future is ours and we should be ready to take it and we sh he is willing to teach us if we are willing to learn and to give us the opportunities if we are ready to accept mm -hmm. yeah how do we how do we remember him a selfless, a selfless man, Ricardo. Um, after that event, uh, we shared a message because I sent a message to him, um, just acknowledging the invitation. You know, I because for me it was really huge, and I, I really wanted to express to him what that meant for me. And I also must mention that that was not a recognition for me alone. It was a recognition for the Namibian Broadcasting Corporation and the work that we do. Recognition for our visionary leaders that we have on at the Namibian Broadcasting Corporation. Recognition for the hard-working women and men that we work with here. I mean, recognition for the team that I work with, for the brains behind it. It was recognition for all of us in the media fraternity. And how we remember him is, personally, he sent, he sent me a message and the message was, we will be in touch. And it breaks my heart that I will never know what we will be in touch was about. I will never know what being in touch would have entailed. Um, but a selfless man, a man who made sure that we all felt equal even though there was certain criticism surrounding the way he led, like showing up at a car wash, for example, we are pained by his death the way we are because we, we felt like we knew him because he made sure that we were part of him. Yesterday, during the vigil that NBC held, the NBC board chairperson mentioned that the president was born a full man, but he left this earth an empty man because he gave his all. Everything, everything. To us. And I felt that statement so much because I felt it. I've, I've, I've received the president's all. I've seen it. He was not a perfect man, of course. None of us are. But his leadership skills stood out, definitely. Thank you, Elago. Mm. Let me not keep you any longer. <laughs> uh, Elago Shidatala, of course, it's reflecting on the, the, the role the president has played, you know, the support for young people, the support for young journalists. World Press Freedom, uh, the number one in the continent for decades plus. As we continue reflecting on...